The first stage is always denial, then comes bargaining, anger, followed by some more anger and depression sets in for Brandon McNulty. I don't think acceptance ever did kick in, though, after that sort of botched bike slash mechanical change. This is the Dauphiné TT, 92 metres of elevation gain in this 32k TT, very flat, very fast, suits the big boys, Wout Van Aert and Ganner. It would be between them. They were neck and neck in worlds last year. Ganner, who took it easy on the climb yesterday, didn't even try to hang on. He went really early before live coverage started, and he put 40 seconds into Durbridge at the first check, and Durbridge came sixth in this TT. So Ganner absolutely smoked it. 53k an hour average and made sure he got some fluids in because he'd have a long time on the hot seat. His teammate Ethan Hayter did a cracking time in this TT as well. He was 30 seconds back at T2, but his T2 to the finish was quickest of anybody in this TT. And he said he lost his visor somewhere through and he was he was struggling to see because he's got his contacts in with the wind. So incredible time from him. He ended up coming third. It's a really good job. Then Jonas uh, before Primoz Roglic, although there's a lot of guys on about 16 seconds, all really close before this TT. He's had a few down TTs, particularly at Torreno this year, p- compared to his Tour de France uh, TTs, which were outstanding. But he was better today. Uh, maybe not his peak level, but best of all the really small GC, or best of all the GC contenders except Roglic, really. He'd um, end up coming seventh, but he's our man of the show, Paul Brandon McNulty. He goes into this chicane. We'll see Roglic against Jonas in this chicane side-by-side later, but he takes this left corner, and he just hops the curb. And I don't know how high that curb is exactly, but he hops down. And I don't know whether... This was a kilometer before we see the problem. They cut back to him, and you see he's looking down, and I don't know if he's dropped his chain or or missed his... I don't know what's gone wrong. Something wrong with the chain, I think. It's not a flat tire. And he thinks... First, he tries to fix it himself, and he's like, ah, I better stop. And this is where he basically ruins his GC result for the Dauphiné completely because the, his uh, mechanical, sorry, DS goes out, tries to get the bike off the car, he maybe lose 10 seconds uh, or less. And he says, no, come and fix the bike. And that mistake will cost him this, both the TT where he's in a standing time trials, McNulty, and this goes on forever. And eventually he's like, oh no, anger comes in as the mechanic and that makes it he moves the bike around which makes it harder for his director or mechanic to fix it and then eventually he does start to get some revs on that wheel here but it doesn't really seem to ever fix it and after i don't know it it was close to 30 seconds they decide mcnulty decides and took another three seconds to get the bike computer off he decides to change the bikes, and here he goes, why didn't I just change the bike in the first place? So it's not really the car's fault at all. I mean, they would have had the bike off, and at this point, I think McNulty's almost partially accepted. Well, he's definitely cooked the TT, no chance of a good result in the TT anymore with nearly a minute lost. And with the long climb to come where he'd be looking to hold on rather than do well... GC is going to be difficult for McNulty. Similar thing happened in Paranese, and you see him, he says it all here, shaking his head. He lost a lot in the crosswinds in Paranese. It stuffed him there. Oh, and while you're here, if you enjoy the videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. It helps out a lot. Gagan Hart, magnificent TT from him today. He came about 10th, I think, ahead of Enric Maas, Jack Haig, the sort of third place to fifth place guys. And then it was Primoz Roglic. Uh, how would he go, the man who won the Olympic gold in the time trial? Here's him side by side. I think he was taking it easy in the corners at the start because he didn't set like a blistering Rogler time. And you see here, I've tried to line him up with Jonas, exactly, but it's hard because they're at a different camera angle, going to this uh, right-left chicane. But you see Jonas takes an extra pedal stroke, just going into this corner, and he ducks in much later than Roglic. Roglic is going in a bit more upright, carrying less speed. And here you see actually Jonas, he goes to the left-hand side of the pothole, or the manhole cover rather, not a pothole, and Roglic on the right-hand side of it. So Jonas seems to take a more aggressive line, take more speed, and he's already... He nearly takes a second out of Roglic through this chicane. And you see, when they first do their first left pedal stroke down out of this chicane, look where they are. Jonas is ahead of that manhole cover. Roglic is behind it when they do their first pedal stroke. So Jonas carried a lot more speed through that uh, chicane, whether Roglic just didn't corner well. I don't think so. I think he's taking it easy. He knows he's in a good position on GC, and he still beat everyone else except Catania, who's really a GC threat here. Um, but yeah, just something to note that it visibly looked to me like he was 
kind of cruising on cruise control through the the tricky sections, which were few and far between, to be honest. And he was still uh, like a really good time, third at the first intermediate, although Wout van Aert hadn't gone yet. And he'd lose about 40 to 42 seconds to Ghana. Only Catania beat him by three seconds, which is a crazy good performance from him. Ben O'Connor, one of his better TTs, actually. He would come about 14th or so, which is like a competent good TT. Mars was good at the first intermediate, a little bit worse at the second, and then sort of faded at the end. He'd also end up in the mid-teens on this TT. And as I said, Catania, magic TT. So as Wout van Aert, he was the only man who could unthrow, dethrone Filippo Ganna in this time trial. There were some threats of rain, and he did get some raindrops on him, but at the first intermediate, he was 11 seconds ahead of Filippo Ganna in the hot seat, thinking, ooh, that's not good. I hope he doesn't continue that. But remember Worlds last year, Wout van Aert came out hot and then he faded a little bit at the end and Ghana beat him. But here, there was a 22 second swing and Ghana smoked the T1 to T2 slower section of this course. There's a bit of traffic up ahead, but I presume Ghana had one minute men. I think Van Aert only had two minute men. So he had less men that he could draft and follow. He got Lefay, but he never managed to get up to David Godu, who also did like a competent TT. Like his TT has improved a little bit, David Godu. It's not complete trash, but Wout van Aert second once again in back-to-back -back days 230 behind Pipo Ghana that is over a 35 minute TT that's nothing that's a couple of corners here or there that's the the organizer's skin suit perhaps made the difference as well but Ghana reigns supreme wins once again another world tour TT two seconds out of Van Aert 17 ahead of Hayte Catania on 39 Roglic 42 Dervish lovely TT 53 seconds Jonas still about 20 seconds ahead of Gagan Hartner 13 less than Caruso and Juan Ayuso top 10 absolute animal well Van Aert keeps the yellow jersey in fact, extends his lead in that ahead of Catania, who's actually now in second. Roglic and Jonas, Jumbo Visma at 1-3-4. I think they're obviously still going to go for Roglic, but they've got Jonas as a card they can play on that mountain stage. Like He's still... Probably climbs better than Caruso. He's 20 seconds ahead of Gagan Hart. Yumbo have a lot of options for the rest of this Dauphiné, and it'll be difficult for Movistar, Ineos, or Ben O'Connor, I think, to walk away with the GC victory. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did. F in the chat for Brandon McNulty, and I'll see you with the recap of the stage tomorrow. Ciao.